And which one are you drinking today? This is the Ninkasi. Uh, two guys uh, started this probably seven years ago in Eugene, uh, maybe eight. And uh, they have pretty much doubled in size every year, and they're building a whole new uh, brew house uh, this year. So they're, they're now distributing uh, in Oregon, Washington, Northern California, growing slowly and deliberately, or quickly and deliberately and uh, they make a very nice range of beers. Uh, we just happen to have only IPAs here today, but they make, they make a wide range. This is their total domination. Um, and then they have another one, which is called Tricera Hops, which is an imperial uh, IPA. Uh, but we love our hops in the Northwest. We love our hops. Hey, we love them out here too. <laughs> That's tasty. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't have a, as much of a bite. No, it's a little smooth. Uh, probably the one with the most bite will be uh, this one over here, the Proxima IPA from Hop Valley. You're in Eugene. Are these all well, these, close all, to you? Or no, I, I, live in, I live across the river in Springfield. Uh, we have one, uh, no, two actually. There's a branch of, of Hop Valley in Springfield. And um, we've got another one downtown now called Plank Town. So Springfield's uh, coming along. It's a smaller town, uh, former mill town. Do you want to taste or you already? Sure. Oh yeah, no, I, I, I can't nah. can't taste too much. I do. I you know I never sit down and compare them. So this will actually be interesting. Yeah, that's a little more in your uh, astringent, uh, more hop forward bite than uh, than in Cassie. I love them all. Yeah. It's enjoyable. So, yeah. Doesn't. I've been drinking a lot of Raging Bitch lately, Flying mm -hmm. Dog. Mm -hmm. It's so hopped up. I think it's thrown off my uh, taste oh, buds. I'm trying to think. What's the. Yeah. Well, uh, Hop Otten. Mm -hmm. We have that one. That one's pretty high. And. God, I had something else recently that was like 110 or something. I can't remember what it was. <laughs> Watershed. Yeah. yeah, this what's is. What's the story behind these guys? Uh, Oakshire, uh, they're, like I say, they're all in this wonderful little hub now. I mean, you can just go to this neighborhood and there's a bunch of new restaurants, little restaurants. It's all very small, low scale, but, and we got three breweries all within walking distance of one another, so it's great. And this kind of gets us to the, the heart of it, head of the Small Brewers Caucus. Mm -hmm. um, it seems like craft beer has become just an important part of the local economy all across the U.S., even mm -hmm. in the Republican South. and. The northwest or the mm -hmm. northeast, which used to be very puritanical, not really embracing it. Have you have you seen that with caucus members? Well, uh, you know, Greg Walden and I. Uh, Greg is a Republican uh, from mostly Eastern Oregon. Uh, that would be uh, uh, he's got full sale in his district, uh, Double Mountain. Uh, there's a new one in Baker City. I don't. I'm not sure the name. Of him. Uh, there's one way up in this uh, little town up in, in the, the mountains there uh, that I'm trying to remember the name of that I really like. Um, anyway, and, uh, and then uh, we have uh, probably the, uh, and then we have the Bend area, which is in Greg's district. I, I think within 15 miles of downtown Bend, there are 24 breweries, and of course, the population is much less than on my side of the mountain where we've got. Uh, you know, 27 in my whole district. So Bend has become sort of an epicenter outside of Portland. Uh, Bend is probably the second highest concentration, and then Eugene uh, and my district would be like the third highest concentration of, of uh, uh, microbreweries, brew pubs. And what are you hearing from these uh, owners and just the craft breweries? I hear there's a lot of tax issues that they're concerned about, also distribution issues. Yeah, well, issues. Greg, Greg and I started, well, I mean, the first time I ever had to, uh, you know, I've been a beer fan for a long time, and there used to be a, a beer out of Washington State called Grant's, and there's this wonderful old guy, Burt Grant, uh, was, uh, was running it at the time. This is like 20 years ago or so. And... Um, he was having a trouble with the, uh, I, I think then it was called BATF, it's now the TTB, the people who have to prove every label. I mean, this is something I, like, what? They have to prove every label? And somehow someone put him, his people in touch with me because they knew I liked beer. I think that was that, just after maybe Zymer G had written an article about a guy named me and David Skaggs from Colorado. We were the only two home brewers they could locate who were in Congress at the time and they did an article about us and I think just after that the 
grant people got in touch and said, hey, we got a problem with these uh, BATF people. We got a label, the label was approved for content, but we reversed the colors and they're telling us that we either got to throw it all out or we got to get the labels off the bottles. Or, and I said, this is crazy, come on, you got to be kidding me. So the color scheme is different. So that was sort of my first involvement in dealing with the federal bureaucracy, which dates from the Prohibition era, essentially, on, uh, on beer. And uh, then much later, uh, Greg and I were just, uh, Greg Walden and I were talking one day, and we were both saying, hey, you know, it's really important uh, and growing, uh, uh, you know, industry in Oregon. And, you know, it would be kind of fun to start a, a caucus here in Congress that focuses on beer because we knew other states were, were picking up on it and do things that we can to promote the industry, uh, deal with federal issues, uh, just you know, have a home for folks. And so we started the, the caucus uh, and we're now up to 100 and 124 members. Uh, would be the wine caucus is still bigger. I'm a member of the wine caucus too. I have a lot of great, uh, nice. great wineries in my district. That'll be the next show. Yeah, but um, so, you know, our number one issue is a, a graduated barrel tax, and we've got some really good documentation on how much uh, employment that would provide to help, uh, you know, kickstart some of the smaller startups, uh, you know, and give them uh, an opportunity to grow more quickly. Uh, it's a nice, uh, nice employment factor. 29,000 people wow. in Oregon. This would be, if they were one company. Yeah. They'd be one of our biggest employers wow. uh, in Oregon, but uh, they are a diversified small business, uh, great folks to deal with. And is it hard to get those issues when you have a bill dealing with small brewers? Is it hard because we've got $17 trillion national debt, we're still winding down these wars. Is it hard to get this on leadership's radar? or is it Well, we're, we're working on it. Um, you know, we've got... Um, We've got to buy, it's one of the last bipartisan things left in Washington, D.C., uh, Small Brewers Caucus. And, um, you know, we've got uh, uh, Jim Gerlach from Pennsylvania, who's on Ways and Means, is my co-chair. So that's a good in on the Republican side of the aisle for uh, working on the graduated tax. Beer, uh, bringing uh, us together. <laughs> there you go. No, I, like I said, it's the last uh, bipartisan thing in just about the last in D.C. Uh, and then uh, we've got... Uh, Rep uh, McHenry from North Carolina, where uh, Sierra Nevada and uh, Fat Tire are both building huge plants uh, in Asheville. Uh, they're developing an East Coast uh, footprint. Uh, he's a, a co-chair, and, uh, and then I've got um, Richie Neal from Massachusetts is also on Ways and Means, uh, and uh, Sam Adams would be his uh, constituent, go. I believe. And uh, he's also uh, one of the, the four uh, co-chairs. And, you know, so we're pushing hard. Uh, we can show that, uh, yeah, uh, you can say, well, you know, we're going to lose some tax revenue. But we can demonstrate through some work that's been done uh, by some economists that the, uh, the economic activity we would generate, the jobs we would create, the taxes those people would pay, uh, it, the whole thing would be a net benefit economically if, if we had a more graduated tax to really encourage more and quicker growth of the smaller breweries. So, And this isn't the Brewers Caucus? Isn't just a ploy to get free beer? No, not at all. I mean, it does have its benefits, but, you know, uh, not free. Of course, we have ethics rules. Uh, but, you know, I mean, um, but every once in a while I do have someone buy me a beer. Uh, and, uh, you know, I've, I've been to the last... Uh, uh, five, I think I've spoken at four of the last five, uh, you know, uh, the international conferences put on, uh, you know, by uh, the uh, craft brewers, uh, you know, out of Boulder. Charlie Papazian's become a good friend. Uh, you know, I've got all his books and uh, he's a great guy to hang around with. And the fun thing is when I hang around with uh, Charlie, I get used to, you know, I've been, I'm at home, people want to talk to you or they want to take your picture with you stuff. And I walked into uh, the first time I went to the International Craft Brewers Conference, I walk into uh, the big reception with Charlie, and people start taking pictures. And I'm thinking, what? I don't. These people don't know me. And I think, oh, it's not me. It's Charlie, <laughs> which is great because then he's immediately surrounded by people, nice. and I can say what my staff always says to me: Would you like a beer? I'll go get one and be back. And then they leave me with a crowd of people. So I left Charlie with a crowd there of admirers, and I went off and got him a beer and came back. So, so I get to hang around with some really great people, uh, and. Uh, 
you know, the International Crap Brewers Association, and also a lot of, you know, I mean, I, as I travel around, uh, you know, I'm not shy about introducing myself and when I travel around the country to people and saying, hey, you know, I'm really into beer, and yeah. uh, I've never been here before, and you got a neat little brewery, and I'm the chair of the House Craft Brewers Caucus. Sometimes it's like, what? Who cares? But other times it's like, oh, really cool. I know about that, and, you know, conversations ensue.